My goodness, it's early. There are only two aspects of coach travel I'm not too impressed with. First, the early start some journeys require, and second, the simple time factor involved. The further you travel, the harder your seat feels. But once the driver has made all these pickups, you're off on your journey. This is one of the UK's longest. We're travelling from the Suffolk coast to Loch Long, north of Glasgow, where we've got five nights at the comfortable Loch Long Hotel, belonging to holiday operator Locks and Glens. This family-owned company has six hotels, plus a new one building, and offers holidays which include half board and an excursion each and every day. Because we usually get on at the first pick-up point, our journey is the longest in time. We usually reckon on about 13 hours in total, but that includes major and minor breaks for refreshment and comfort and to accommodate the driver's tachograph brake needs, a legal obligation to take proper brakes during his working day. Fifty miles to Penrith takes about an hour through three different counties, North Yorkshire, County Durham and Cumbria. And it's ABC along this road, another bloody castle. <laughs> There are six, but you should see four of them. Bowes, Brough, Appleby and Broadcastle. I'll point those out as we go along. All of the drivers have their own repertoire of facts and fancies, and they all provide the occasional gem of humour and interest when the mood takes them. If you haven't been on a holiday like this before, well, you'll soon become accustomed to the way they go. The final break northbound on this trip was at Gretna Green, where this couple got married just a few years ago. Then we are off again into the deepening November darkness to head for the hotel. And approach the Kingston Bridge where five lanes go into two. Well that's not good. In fact to be honest it's not something we, uh, we do very often. Loch Long was the first hotel in the Locks and Glens group and it set the scene for later purchases. A very scenic location, a comfortable interior style and good public spaces. The food service is excellent with meals served in relays to coach size groups who eat at a time suitable for their day's planned outing. Today we are off on a drive through Glen Coe with its stunning scenery and sad history which will follow with a stop at the Oban Sea Life Centre and then travel on to Oban itself. 1500s, a lot of people died for their religious beliefs. Here it is on the left, Pulpit Rock. So he says welcome to the Highlands. We're already in the Highlands. The Highlands started Loch Lomond on this part of Scotland, but it means welcome to the Highland region, such as you would have um, Perth and Kinross, Ross and Cromarty, Caithness, Sutherland, Argyle and Butte, Teesside, it's just a region, it's a Highland region. <coughs> the Oban Sea Life Centre, which is quite a good visit. It's all included in the money, so really we've quite enjoyed it and we've seen a few, well, fish, really. <laughs> the guy feeding the seals was really quite interesting, however, and that was really worth seeing. And uh, the scenery itself is not bad around here, apart from the fact, of course, that it's rainy, misty, 
and so we're losing a bit of the enjoyment but we have been to this area before and it's really pretty. I think one of the problems with coming to Scotland in the, the winter or the spring really or the uh, early spring is that the weather's unreliable but there you go Scotland and we're quite a long way north so I guess that we have to kind of put up with it and we're very happy to do so. They just shuffle along on their bellies, almost like a giant furry caterpillar. Back in, see the way it moves towards the water. That, that is how a seal moves on land, whereas a sea lion will hold its front flippers out in front of them and you use them almost like legs. They kind of walk along like this. And they'll hold their head up high, whereas a seal will just sort of stay its whole body to the ground. No. We'll also tag their rear flipper, see why Brendan's out, he's got um, an orange tag on his rear flipper. There's an identification number on that, so that's how the Irish Seal Sanctuary knew that it was him that kept getting washed up on the beach. In the next part of our Locks and Glens holiday, we'll be off to Oban and then we'll visit Glasgow. That's a city that looks good and feels good.